Thank you so much, uh, Miles, and welcome everyone to Bridge Books. And Pumza, always, always fantastic to see you. You look amazing as always. I must come and drink your water <laughs> Thank because you. you are always, always with it. Um, <laughs> it is, no, that, I mean, the jacket is a dress. So it's a, I want the blanket. It's a blanket. <laughs> I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you must you. tell me where you bought it. I need to get me one of these. It looks very, very warm. And I lose the weight I'm going to know. I forget the weight. The weight is the thing that we want. No, especially in the sky. <laughs> um, guys, this morning we are launching Pumza's um, fifth book. Fourth? Fifth. fifth. Oh my God, Pumza's fifth book, but it is the second book in the Strum My Page series. So um, she says here, this book is not to be read on its own. So in order to understand what goes on in this story, you need to have read um, Strum My Pain, and you are in luck, Bridge Books has copies. So we expect both copies signed, by the author herself. Now, this is how the program is going to go. Um, there's very few of us, so mm -hmm. I'm going to have a conversation yeah. for like 14 minutes, mm -hmm. and then there will be 20 minutes of um, comments, questions, anything you want to ask Pumza. It doesn't have to be related to the book. Mm -hmm. um, she is a self-published author. If you are interested in writing and publishing your own book, Pumza is here to give you the 411 on how on how to do it. So Punza, let's get into it. I am very, very excited to be talking about Stramlet mm -hmm. because having read Stram My Pain, mm -hmm. I mean that was that was like Tom Cruise type of thing. So yeah. Yeah, there was blood, <laughs> yeah. there were car chases, yeah. you had, as my son says, artillery. <laughs> you had guns from here to Ukraine in that book. Mm -hmm. But with this one, you took a very, very different route. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of concentrating on the outside action, mm -hmm. you brought us into the lives of these two people. And I liked how the thematic statement focuses on Ndoni. Mm -hmm. You know, we met Ndoni in Strap My Pain. Mm -hmm. She was a, a, a girl coming from a disadvantaged background, met a guy, good looking, impossibly wealthy, mm -hmm. and was swept off her feet. Mm -hmm. But instead of ending her story right there, you then wrote her and gave, gave, gave us a, a, a person, mm -hmm. a person who was dealing with a whole lot of issues, issues, a, a the critical issue is something that is always swept under the carpet, nobody speaks about, and I was very, very happy that you, you, the spotlight was on that. Mm -hmm. Now, before we move on to the issue in this book, if you could just um, tell us about Stramlet. I don't know if you want to start from where Stram My Pain um, left off, mm -hmm. so that you bring us into, into this new story. Yeah. I think, um, as you said, it was w with Strum My Pain, it was just, the story was just big. Their lives was big. And, and um, sort of, um, Ndoni is brought into this world where she is, you know, she has never experienced anything like mm -hmm. it. And um, I just felt like there was not enough of her. I didn't give enough of her in that book. Um, I made Udo Sander to be this big, you know, giant of a man who even his personality is, you know, overwhelming. So I felt like um, there could have been more of Ndoni, there could have been more of, you know, the personal, after they are happily ever after, mm. what happens? Because I just felt like it doesn't mean they, they can't just, you know, go through this adventure for months and then all of a sudden they have a happy ever after and then it's the end. No, I just wanted to show the beginning of, of their lives, how their lives is like, that this, this, um, they are romance, so their life is not like the fairy tale that, you know, Strama Payne had portrayed it to be. Um, it was more relatable to an ordinary person uh, without even the resources that Lusanda might have. It was um, an every woman's story, so to speak. 
So I didn't I didn't want to end it there. I felt like there was more of Undoni that I could explore. And also the people that register my pain bug me. <laughs> <laughs> that they bug me. I, I I thought I thought I needed to do more of Undoni, but I was like, ah, I will, you know, like I, I, I do with the other characters, like mm. with the Bo Bongani and other characters. They will creep in in other books, like you know, there will be a passage about them. I thought I would do that with Ndoni and Lusanda and not give them any title. But when people read, they would read Stram My Pen overnight and then I would wake up to an SMS that was sent at 1 a.m. Poems that it can't just end there. We want to know. We want to know what happens to Ndoni. What happens to the baby? What's the gender of the baby? How's Lusanda as a dad? How, how, I was like, yo, guys, make up your own scenario how they are. But it did end, and I was like, okay, maybe there's a possibility of giving people more as well. So that also played a role in, 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 in the birth of this book because people wanted more, and I was like, yeah. Okay, so are you saying that at the end of Strum My Pain, mm -hmm. when you were done and you pressed send, send. and all those um, drafts were done and redone, mm -hmm. and the book was finally produced into this? You did not have an idea of a sequel. No. We were done. Mm -hmm. I was uh, supposed to be working with Udo because even at the end uh, of Strum My Pain, there's a, a Duma, you know, hint yeah. that he's is having his own thing. So I, I was supposed to be working on that book, but instead of starting that book now, uh, there was just this little voice as well with the voice of the people. I says, but how is Noni as a mother, as a young mother at that age, an unexpected pregnancy? Uh, she's very young. She hadn't finished school. She hadn't done all the things that she needed to do. Is Lusanna really going to be that savior for her, or is she, will, she, will she still pursue the things that she wanted to do? Uh, let it go, Pons, but then the people didn't want to let it go. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, I, I will write it. Um, and that's the kind of writer I am as well. Yeah. I will be led by an inspiration that just comes out of nowhere and it will lead me. I will have plans, like I do have plans. Mm -hmm. I have three books, you know, all in three chapters as I always say. Yeah. Um, but some, some other book will come and take over and then I will, I will follow that. So that's how I write. Amazing. I mean, guys, that shows that we hold the power as readers not only in terms of opening our purses and buying books, mm -hmm. but we can shift and move mm -hmm. the direction of stories and somehow and terrify, you know, <laughs> terrify, <laughs> terrify the authors into, into, into writing um, a, a, a sequel. Mm -hmm. Now, getting into um, Strumlet, if you could uh, briefly share with us, those who have not read the book, mm -hmm. You know what is um, the book all about? The book is mostly about uh, how Ndoni adjusts as a as a young mother, and it, it it basically starts from birth when she's giving birth, her experiences at birth, things that she didn't expect, but were happening, things that she was not prepared for, like any young mother. I think I took some of my experiences and put them in the. Um, because uh, sometimes you think when you fall pregnant, oh yeah, it's all roses, you're gonna have a baby, and, and, and. but labor will go its own way. So I give that to Noni. And also it's about the postpartum depression that she deals with. And we, we don't talk enough about postpartum. We, um, it's something that uh, sometimes when you feel like how you feel, people will be like, oh, it's baby blues, deal with it. And so I wanted to explore more of that in fiction and how people struggle with it. Um, Ndonis is severe. Some people it's mild, but it's still they, they experience it and sometimes they don't know how to explain it. Uh, so I wanted to take that 10 and see how they deal with it. Um, in Strand My Pain, we saw of more of Lusanda's uh, um, mental state than we did Ndonis. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to reverse those roles and see how the husband, as a husband, Lusanda will be now when he has to deal with someone who's struggling mentally and also they have a newborn baby who's as demanding as my firstborn baby was. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's how it is. 
and you bring in a lot of struggles that Ndomi is, is, is struggling with, mm -hmm. you know, because um, she's going through this postpartum depression, mm -hmm. but it, it does not only affect her. Mm -hmm. We see how it affects her partner, mm -hmm. the daddy, Lusanda. Mm -hmm. We see how it affects his parents, mm -hmm. and then also the friends. Mm -hmm. You know, they are all tiptoeing mm -hmm. around her. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to act towards her, mm -hmm. but they don't know they don't know how to how to treat her. Now, what motivated you to bring in <coughs> all those facets mm -hmm. of, of, of this sort of um, mental health disorder? If you are in a family unit, that's those people around you are the people that are going to be dealing with you if mm -hmm. you're going through you know a, a mental illness. And more often than not, the people around you don't understand what you're going through. They will pick it up maybe too late, or especially if you also yourself don't know what it is that you're going through and you can't explain. So your support system, if they're not aware of what is going on, then they can't really support you in the way that you need them to support um, the support. Uh, so I wanted to bring that. I wanted to bring that element of you know us in black families. Sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we feel like I feel like a lot of people uh, when they gave me feedback, they said, I just I didn't do that. I just wanted it to snap out of it. And a lot of people have that mentality that when you're going mm -hmm. through a mental illness, you just need it to snap out of it. And I was like, no, she could not snap out of it. If she wanted to snap out of it, she would have snapped out of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's not something that you snap out of it. And I, I just wanted to show as well that this is sometimes where your most important support comes from. It comes from your intimate partner, comes from your parents. If you do have it, comes from the friends around you. And everybody needs to be involved in, in that unit in, in being able to help you through whatever it is you're going through. And more often than not, we lack that. And that, that, that's, I think that's where the, our demise comes from. Mm, and um, <clears throat> so that is a lot of um, what... Um, Dr. Sangen Mobo writes about um, in her book Reflections on a Convoluted Mind. It's the multi approach, the, the, the multi tier approach mm -hmm. to her mental state that you know she needed all these people mm -hmm. in order to get well, mm -hmm. and she still needed the support mm -hmm. in order to, to remain well. Mm -hmm. um, I want us to talk now about. Um, Doni's uh, birthing experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see in the last book that mm -hmm. you know this pregnancy was uh, not only unexpected. Mm -hmm. You know, it was also un uh, unplanned, mm -hmm. and we see this young girl thrust into motherhood. Mm -hmm. Does she want to be a mother? Does she want to be a parent? Is she mentally and physically ready to parent someone? And more often than not, you know, when we go through through pregnancy, the birthing process yeah. also impacts on how we relate That's to the newborn and how we move from being pregnant to not being pregnant to suddenly mothering this very, very, very tiny, tiny human being. Mm -hmm. I would like you to read on very early in the, in the book, <laughs> on page 10, um, where there is a change, mm -hmm. um, a change in... in, in in, in, in the birthing process, if you could start from, um, and well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, and then just end to where she is being wheeled into into okay. the theater, which is page eleven at the end of the chapter that ends with the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know why I left church. <laughs> <laughs> then the preacher will be like, let's read it. And then point. <laughs> it's already there. We must give something. We must give people something to to mull over. Okay, I can give them a book. <laughs> <laughs> so we are in in hospital here, right? So this is like the first uh, chapter of the book. Um, I'm not sure. We need to do an ultrasound to check the baby, Indoni. You are not dilating as fast as I would like. You've been on five centimeters for the past three hours and your contractions are more frequent. The nurse returns, the ultrasound machine is set up and, I, and they perform the checks. The doctor's frown intensifies. What is it? Lusanda asks. His grip on my hand tightening. The baby is getting exhausted and Donis cervix hasn't fully opened for a natural birth. Dr. Phillips responds. 
while she just uh, she jots down um, notes on her bed. What does that mean? My voice wobbles. I'm not prepared for anything else than a healthy baby. The doctor's eyes soften. We need to perform an emergency cesarean. How safe is the procedure, Hundun? Busanda asked. A hint of panic in his tone. Could we not wait a little? I shake my head just as the doctor responds. It is relatively safe, no need to be alarmed. The doctor's gate starts between the two of us. If it saves the baby, then let's do it. I say with conviction. Baby, I turn to his worried face. We have to. We save the baby, no arguments, Lusanda. Besides, Dr. Phillips says it's safe. Lusanda's jaw works, but he doesn't respond. I nod to Dr. Phillips. This will be good for the baby, Mr. Mobo, and I've performed many of these procedures without a glitch. At this point, I want anything that will make sure that this baby is out of me. If that means a C-section, then I'm on board. I tell Lusanda less eloquently. The papers are signed, and it's a flurry of activities until the anesthetic has relieved me of my pain. I am now looking up at Lusanda's anxious face, and my hand is firmly in his as he looks between me and what the doctors are doing. The green partition separates my top half from the lower half, and all I feel is pressure in my abdomen. If I knew how painless this process is, I would have opted for it from the beginning. Are you okay, baby? Feel any pain? Lusanda asks. I smile at him, probably the most genuine smile in hours. Yes, this is much better. I gently squeeze his hand. You see anything? He shakes his head. He has been warned not to look behind the partition, so he remains seated by my head. There we go. The baby is here. I feel the final tug as the doctor pumps a few seconds of maybe longer of holding my breath. Lusanda's grip tightens. Then when we hear tiny cries, Breath gushes out of me at the same time as tears do. Suddenly, the squishiest face I've ever seen is thrust before me. I can't see her clearly with my tears blaring my vision. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, could you just share with us? Um, we are going to clap. Yeah, clap. <laughs> take up reading if you could just share with us you know your your emotions your your thought process mm -hmm. um when you were writing especially in the scene this scene was borrowed from me because mm -hmm. this was my experience uh, so it was sort of familiar sort of like oh i'm, I'm tapping into the archives because that was a long time ago <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i remember you know, with my pregnancy, I had prepared for natural birth. Mm -hmm. So I read books on natural birth. I read, like, you know, I'm going to do this. It's my first baby. I got this. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm going to be that mother, that woman of, you know, I don't know yeah. what we call this woman who gave birth naturally, but I was going to be those. Yeah. And um, so I didn't prepare for anything else. I didn't prepare for epidural. I didn't prepare. Like, I, if it was not me, I was not going to have any assistance with regards to that. I would have this naturally. Then when it happened, mm -hmm. I was screaming for anything that would relieve me of pain. So that was me, and 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 the, the you know the the process of now the scare that we had because um, we don't know was not dilating and mm. the baby was getting exhausted and I had the same skin, I had the similar skin. So eventually when um, I had to have the C-section, so it's the same thing. So I was relating my own, you know, personal experiences in that. Um, and it, it's scary. It's scary because uh, firstly, labor on its own is, is a scary process. Mm -hmm. And now when things unexpected uh, pick up, it's worrying. And now you really understand that your life and your baby's uh, life is on the hands of you know mm -hmm. doctors, which at this point, when you are in pain, you really don't trust anyone. So it was, it was sort of emotional in remembering that this was my experience as well. Uh, so that's how I felt as I was, as I was writing this. And... Um, it was also a wake up call that this is not as you know as easy mm. as I assumed it would be. Um, there's whole uh, lot of other you know possibilities 
of things that could go wrong that I don't have control over um, that I do not know. So mm -hmm. even with Ndoni's as mind, it was all that. Like it was like, oh, you've just entered into another whole you know, world, yeah. world and you're not in control. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's how it feels like. No, it was. I mean, it was written so beautifully with with care as well as um, sensitivity. Do you think that has to do with you being a, a woman as well as a mother to be able to write such characters? Probably. Mm -hmm. Probably because I can understand, I can empathize, and I can, um, with female characters, I think I feel more for them than I do with my male characters. I understand what they're going through. I understand their emotional you know, state and you know the, the the nuances that of our lives that you know you cannot even articulate with words. I understand those, so I tend to tap into those more often when I write uh, female characters, mm. and I feel like it's my strong point because I know. <laughs> you know, but how then do you do you create a balance, especially in this story, because you have this huge thematic statement which is carried by Doni mm -hmm. but you also bring in Lysander who gets his airtime in the story mm -hmm. his parents and the rest of the friends mm -hmm. also get their spot, their spot in the in, in the story how do you then create that balance it's a must it's a balance that you must create <laughs> because then one character cannot uh, especially when you're doing two of characters sometimes i always feel like i wish i could have just did one you know point of view and with with Lusana, i had to create a balance and fortunately as well with the previous book uh i had made it like because we had issues we had a lot of unresolved issues and now it, it saved me uh when it came to this book because then i needed to go back to him and say this is a, a, a stress uh, triggering process your woman is going through this mental condition you have a new baby that you must deal with. And he still hadn't dealt with his own issues. Mm -hmm. was still, he saw therapy here and there, but he thought he was fine. I wanted to bring it back and be like, just because you two are in love, mm -hmm. don't think that it's going to solve all your problems. All your problems are going to disappear. And I think that's what saved me with Lusana because then I had, I had him now needing to go back. He had unresolved issues with his parents because his parents were gone for his... Yeah. all his childhood life yeah. so now suddenly they are here here to deal with that here to deal with his you know emotional state and dealing with where he was as a child and, and things like that so i think it, it became my saving grace to him to you know to bring up the unresolved issues is that the son that had to be dealt with but they couldn't be swept under the carpet and mm. yeah we're gonna go back to your um how you, you put across a dual point of view. Mm -hmm. But I want us now to to tap into um, Lusanda in relation to Ndoni's um, mental mental state. You know, I mean we can see throughout the book how she is suffering mm -hmm. with um, motherhood, mm -hmm. how she is suffering with self-image, self-confidence. And, you know, she is dithering. She wants to be independent. Mm -hmm. She wants her own home. She wants That's to do things different. for herself. Mm -hmm. But then with a small baby, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's always great to, to have help. And if you have someone as helpful as, as Lucinda, I mean, why not, why, not, why not get the help? But my question is, you know, how then do you write someone as forceful and as big a character as Lusanda mm. into such a delicate, very delicate topic? Mm. I mean, he could have easily railroaded could have. Ndoni, but you know, you, you just gave him snippets mm -hmm. and layers of sensitivity. Mm. Uh, it was a difficult one, I would say, because in my mind, already, right, I think since I've created this character, he's big. He's, yes. he's, he's larger than life. So now um, I had to take him down a peg okay. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and show his human side, not the wealthy, you know, big, mega um, wealthy person, but his, his human side, the side that uh, 
loves Ndoni, the side that wants to take care of her, the side that wants to, not by show, not by, you know, showy means, not by, you know, saying money, taking care, taking care. He had to really be there um, emotionally. And I needed to show that because he can come off as overwhelming and overbearing. And, and, and so I needed to show the other side to him. The side that is gentle, you know, gentle with the baby, gentle with, um, um, with him. And it's, it's his first baby as well. And I remember when, uh, when I was still writing Ravage Souls and Lusanda would, uh, would come up as this character that was, um, he was, uh, you know, elusive and, and, and in, intriguing for people. No one, no one knew at that time when I wrote Love is Soul that the Playboy yeah. would, she would be this <laughs> <laughs> would be this man <laughs> that was humbled by you know an infant um, that would you know have diaper duty and all of that. So I needed to bring that to him, and and I think my intention when I created the son that I'm gonna take this large Playboy man and just bring him to end. And to do that, to use Undoni and to use the baby. And I believe I did. You did. I hope I did. I, you, definitely, <laughs> you definitely did. I mean, if you were not convinced that you were ever going to leave with a copy today, mm -hmm. I'm sure um, Pumza has convinced you that you definitely need a copy. And as I said, that it is not a standalone book to understand Undoni and Lusanda. You have to read this one. So please, we do expect you to leave with two copies next. Yes. Or more. Or more. Or more. We expect you to leave with two copies or more. All of, my forms, I guess. All of this. Yeah. yeah. Buy, buy everything. <laughs> buy, buy everything. Um, There's two seats open. Why are you all shy now? <laughs> Now let's let's move on to um, character development and and the way that you approach it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in Strum My Pain, Udoni, as I said, is is a, is not a minor character. Mm -hmm. She is very very important mm -hmm. to Sanda. Mm -hmm. But then in 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 Strumlet, you know, she is the anchor. Yeah, she is the the anchor of, of the story. Now, once you've decided on um, how to create a series, mm -hmm. then um, how much time, you know, do you think a series gives you more time mm -hmm. in terms of character development or is there more pressure on you as a, as a writer mm -hmm. to, to, to bring in more of, of the same person, like in, in Donny's case? Mm, interesting question. Um, actually, when I looked at it, when I looked at Stramlet, the, the, I had to I had to actually go back and read Stramlet mm -hmm. because I needed I needed growth. I needed to see the growth between the two. I didn't want a repetition of um, of Lusanda of of him, you know, still being action hero or whatever. So I needed a different side, but. They, they had to he had to show more growth. Even with, with Ndoni, I needed to see that because I feel like in the first book she was more you know, I okay, even in the second book she didn't change but there was growth. <laughs> <laughs> there was growth. It's between the the, the the pages. You can you can you can feel the growth. But um I think because this was intentional for me, I needed to see the growth. So it wasn't as difficult to do. But with my prior books, I think I felt the pressure because sometimes it's like a single like when I when I wrote, let me let me not talk about any other when I wrote Stram My Pain, there had to be growth from when they started towards the end because I, I had um, I had no other plans for a sequel. So I had, there was more pressure there. As I said, like, no halfway through the book now there has to be a difference in the difference in this you know characters um there has to be a change for the mm. better you know you can't be it can't be Donny complaining about how she looks and how she feels and her insecurities <laughs> at some point you know there, there has to be the growth yeah so there's more pressure because I, I feel like with a with a series it allows you uh, or me as a writer to to develop them because then there's also the space between writing Mm. There's the space between writing. There's the 
um, feedback. Feedback from the readers also helps. Sometimes when they talk about the character, you're like, oh, that's that's how the character is. Okay, then then you, you tend to to use those, you know, because how they see the character sometimes can be different. So with the feedback that I received from Strama King, I think it helped me to develop these uh, these two more in this. Um, I remember one feedback was like, I found. Um, Lusanda to be almost, you know, abusive in a way in how he was. Oh, he was. <laughs> but then it helped me in the approach and how I approached him in this, and I was intentional in how I, you know, I created his character in the second book. So with the series, it does give you that because then even with the feedback of people, then it helps. But in a single book. Yeah, for me, I still struggle. <laughs> you still, <laughs> I still struggle. Yeah. You still struggle. Mm -hmm. I, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. um, now, zooming into, I think, also one of the anchoring themes in Stramlet is um, mental health awareness. And we can see how both Domi and Lusanda mm -hmm. honor the awareness of their own mental health. Mm -hmm. I mean, they each have a a therapist mm -hmm. and and they have committed mm -hmm. to 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 going for counseling mm -hmm. seeking help and 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 getting better in mm -hmm. order to become not only better partners mm -hmm. as well as um better better parents how important was it for you to bring in that that element of knowing ourselves enough to know when we need to help. seek help yeah I think for me it's important. I think the, the past books I've written, um, I don't know. I think I've sort of been in the past two years where we need um, help the most uh, mentally. We've been going through the most. And sometimes we sit with these issues and we don't seek help and we don't do anything about it and we feel shame about it. Um, it's just to remove the stigma. I feel like you know we can do that even with literature. If our favorite characters, uh, know that you know what I'm not okay I need to seek help it may encourage people to, to, to normalize it to normalize a seeking help um, Ulu Sander looking at him and the kind of man is you would expect to see him say no I'll, I'll deal with it I'll, I'll deal. Yeah. so even if in such a big powerful man has you know we you know I'm like I've had enough I need to seek help and I, I try and push that forward in my writing that um, let's normalize uh, talking about uh, our mental uh, illnesses. Let's normalize uh, seeking help. Uh, let's remove the, the stigma. Let's remove the shame in, in feeling that way. Um, and you know, in our black communities, it's not in, it's not a thing that we do. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, in, in the recent years now, people are starting to yeah. uh, to come up and talk about it and. and, and know that they need to seek help and you cannot be a better partner if you, you do not realize you know how well or how unwell you are and I was I had to make you son to realize that you know what what is affecting John is also affecting him he may not realize it he may not understand it but then his you know dreams and nightmares resurface because now there was a, a trigger in the house so he needed to deal with that um, had it been a different scenario, he would take it out on her. He would abandon her in, in his state of need because, you know, this woman doesn't understand me, doesn't give me sex, doesn't do A, B, and C. And they leave. Most of the time, men will leave when there's an infant during pregnancy and when there's an infant yeah. because they can't deal with the emotional state of them. They don't understand it. They take it personal. They think, oh, you are rejecting me. So I, I had to you know make it um, clear that she has an issue she's dealing with it you have an issue mm. and in both um, of their treatment plans you bring in an important element that it's, it's not only about the pills you know it's yeah. not only about antidepressants mm -hmm. and anxiety medication mm -hmm. The important part is also the environment, yes. you know, the home environment, the people that you hang around with, mm -hmm. and also constantly, you know, making your appointments, keeping your appointments with with your therapist. And we see how 
Ulusanda goes all out to make the change in order for Ndoni to come into a better environment that was going to, to help with her getting getting well. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's that effort that have, and I did, I did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of research and I read because I wanted also to understand and I, I'm going through my own stuff. So I'm like, yeah, before I go to the deep end, maybe I might need to go. <laughs> <laughs> to go in somewhere. <laughs> so it's, 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 um, it's yeah. a, it, I mean, it's important. Mm -hmm. It's important. Sometimes we can't afford it. Um, I remember I, I, I did a post on Facebook asking in the public sector how people can do it. It's, it's, it's not as easy, you know, as it is as we write it mm -hmm. because these resources are not available <coughs> and they are, they're not easily available. And if you can't afford it, then you, you know you have a problem. But you like, what do I do? But I mean, we can do the small things. We can, you know, the, the changes around us. We can make those, you know. Uh, so it's not about the medication only. Yes, some people will require medication. I'm not a doctor, guys. I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> some people will require medication. So it's there's a lot of things that, that go into it. It's not just the one thing yeah. that can help. So I, I wanted to show that as well. I wanted that to come across that even if you have to remove your, yourself in this because uh Donnie had to remove herself in that space where she felt like this this is where my triggers come from this baby is triggering me she had to remove herself and and for a bit so that you know she can deal with whatever it is that she was going through on her own and that's okay too i mean for your mental state sometimes your husband might not be your your, your, your solution or your parents or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you need your own time, book yourself, then come back and one of the group and then you can help you together. Mm. No, that's that is absolutely, absolutely true. But then you throw in a curveball. Mm -hmm. You know, Ulusanda has gone all out mm -hmm. to create mm -hmm. a safe as well as an enabling environment for your mm -hmm. And then she goes and she wants to move into her own townhouse. Why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 because I'm a sweat. At, at some point, men must sweat a little bit. I'm a woman and not, they're not making the <laughs> 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 You have to do it. You know what? Um, I feel like Undoni always had that thing, even from the first book. I think she always had that thing. She had her dreams. Yes. She had her own dreams. She wanted her own success. And she was on, you know, on her own. She may have been derailed because of, you know, um, fees and all that. But I believe on her own, she would have finished her education. She would have gotten herself to somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I felt that... Oh, she felt not to me. I felt that she felt. <laughs> she felt that um, she needed. Like I think there's always that thing. I don't know if it's me. Like I feel like if I have a dream and someone comes along and, and sweeps me off my feet, yes, I will be taken off my feet. But there will always be that thing yeah, that yeah, yeah. I need my yeah, own yeah. success. I need to do my own. And I felt like Ndoni, if she didn't do that, mm. she would have always have that constant feeling like, but I always wanted, like, I'm, I'm staying in this rich man's house and I always wanted to have my own house. So I, I wanted to give her that. Get her to get that feeling of having your own small little townhouse, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she just looked at it like it's tiny. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it's more, it's more you know detailed in the book than that. Uh, but then she had what she always wanted to have, which is her independence and her townhouse. And then it was actually okay. Lusanda has it better, and then she went there. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, yeah. it, it was annoying probably because where are you going? Yeah, where are you going yeah. again? <laughs> but you give her what she wants yeah. and then she'll realize it's okay. 
I I'm I'm good. Sometimes here. two are better than one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Well, it, and it is. is and it <laughs> is. And and now as I was writing, I was looking at her like, "Get are you sure you want to move? You have to work <laughs> But she was like, "Yes, I want to move out. I want my own space." I was like, "Okay, go ahead." And then Lusanda said, "Go ahead." And he was not full. By the time we left, he was like, "Yeah, no, go." Yeah. No, but yeah. Well, he was well. He was so sweet about it, you know. Just that there was a provided. moment. There was a moment. It was like yeah, ah. you could see that <laughs> it upset him no end mm -hmm. having her, having her move move out. Not only out of 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 their home, mm -hmm. but you know, moving out of his oh. life mm -hmm. and the having his life. and now you have his friends and his parents mm -hmm. talking into his life about. His loss of masculinity look at you and now. look at you now. And this woman She's who's gone. pulling you by the nose. You know she is controlling and stuff like that. And she and is though, isn't she? Mm -hmm. People say Lusanda is controlling. That for me, I think Lou is controlling. Do you think she's controlling? I feel like he's he's more he he, he prefers being in charge, <coughs> not controlling. Yeah. But being in charge and knowing that if I do this, it's it's done. It's, yeah. So with Ndoni, he needed to know what if I say it, then what Ndoni was different. Ndoni is the type that believes she can do everything by herself. <laughs> by herself, she doesn't need help. And then that's where the frustration yeah, came. The friction came. And they, they couldn't really get common ground, especially from Stram. Mm. Yes. Because she was resentful yeah. from Stram. Because yeah. 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 now there's a baby, and then now all of a sudden I'm living in this man's house. Yeah. Mm. She had already planned out her life. Mm. Now he came in and just shook her mm. off her feet. She mm. was not ready for that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it took her a while to actually understand what is happening with her life. Yeah. And I think that's where the frustration between the two of them Can't started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for putting that into Best perspective for us. And <laughs> again, I cannot, you know, the importance of reading Stram before you read um, Strum, yeah, no, this you know, you get yeah, mm. the little, <laughs> the little strap, the little strap. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the title. Yeah. Before, before we move on to my next question. Yeah, uh, let's. The title. Let's talk about it. The title is two ways. Mm. It's also a reader's choice. This. <laughs> Yeah, you. <laughs> yeah. I have, okay. we have a group uh, that we you know migrated from Facebook with them and it ended up being on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think at the time where I wrote um, the books, Unspoken Truth, Ravaged Souls, and Stun My Pain, people got pregnant. <laughs> and then, yeah, a lot of people <laughs> fell pregnant. And it was not my box. They were doing their own thing. Yeah, that's a show. So, <laughs> so and then they, they, they we, we would always refer to the new, you know, babies as stramlets. So it's like, oh, well, who has the little stramlet? I don't know half their names. I know they are stramlets. <laughs> so this comes from there. So this is also a birth from. <laughs> so that's another part. Also, you know, it's a little, it's, 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 it's a key. <laughs> it's a little thing. It's, it's yeah. like a, a, a part of a small part of. So this is a small part of of this one. Yeah, that that's the title. That's the title. That's that's where it it comes from. Yes. Okay. Again, the power of readers cannot be underestimated. Yeah, no. I should have written an order to my <laughs> You should have. You should have. Did you thank them in your acknowledgement? I always thank. Them. If they're complaining, I have I asked the government. Why? Yeah. I will have my acknowledgement. Mm. Like, I guys. Wow. Yeah. And she's acting surprised. <laughs> <laughs> printing costs. <Wow. laughs> printing costs. Yeah, because I'm self published. There was a pandemic. <laughs> Printing cars. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Like, speaking of the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, how how did that um, affect um, your writing? Yeah. As well as your ability to produce books. 
it, uh, you know what? The first, the first, we are on the third year, eh? Yes. Wow. Mm, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's been 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 the yeah. first year was because we were, we were locked in, so there was nothing else to do for me but write. So I wrote. This came out. Uh, something about you came out, uh, which is the first two years, the first year, eh? yeah. So I wrote. I had basically time to do that. Now I think my mind is exhausted because I'm like, I don't wanna write, I don't wanna read. Mm -hmm. Just just wanna leave, but then yeah, I need to write. So this this was was it took longer than these two books put together because I don't know, I think emotionally I'm I'm tired as well. And the topic in the book was also draining and the research that I did on mental illness, on you know, on, on all of that was draining. So I, I, I was exhausted afterwards. So it has taken a toll. Or maybe I overdid it the past two years. So now I'm like I write one paragraph for two weeks. There's a term for that. It's it's called writer's block. I don't want to believe in that because then once you believe that I will sit and chill everybody's like, when is the it's your writer's block. Definitely the writer's block. I would use that as an excuse. I don't wanna. I don't even wanna go there because I know there's one reader, one reader, and she's also one best friend who's ready for chains that bind. Lord, yes. <laughs> she thinks I'm on chapter twenty. <laughs> But when I'm looking at the audience, I want to see She's who not that here, is. that's why I'm not here. That's why I'm not She would show me a lot of she didn't have seen. Yeah. I want to join the ones of the The ones of the stramlets. But I'm not bringing no stramlets, eh? Yeah, the the By By there, the, the, the admission is... Ah, you're so smart. <laughs> Hey, when the school fees go down, how do you move? I'm going to ask two more questions mm -hmm. and then open it to everyone who's here. Comments, um, um, questions, anything about any of Pumza's books, mm -hmm. not only the just Stramlet. limited to, to Stramlet. Um, the other theme that you bring into this book is the change in dynamics of the family units. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we are known as so and so's children, mm -hmm. but in this book we see Ulusanda mm -hmm. how he interacts with mm -hmm. his parents mm -hmm. as the adult child, mm -hmm. and you also bring in Ulubabalo's experience mm -hmm. with um, with his parents as well, and how now as an adult how he interacts, how interacts with them. I mean. Why that shift? Um, uh, these books are a series. This is a sequel within a series, okay. <clears throat> and they, they. I think the overall theme for me when I first wrote them, because uh, it started with unspoken truth, and then it went to rubbish soul, and in rubbish soul we experience Ulubabalo being shunned by his family for his sexuality. So I think from there, I developed the thing of um, family is more than blood. Yeah. So as the group of friends, they had created their own, their family. own family. Also, yeah. Lusanda, his parents are just only now in the picture. Before, they were like forcefully uh, trying to force him to join you know, the, the, the family. So they, they had no relations. Lusanda had no relations with his family. Mm -hmm. Lubabalo had just broken up with his. Uh, Luke Lolo's mother was this person who did not speak for years after the husband died. So that group of friends, oh, Luz, uh, Ryan had been now disowned by his yes, folks. So yeah. none of them had like perfect functioning families. So they came together and they created their own family. And that is the theme that has been going on from the first book until this one. Mm -hmm. That we have our own units. It's not blood, it's, it's born of love, it's born of friendship, of good friendships. Hence now, it is now with, with, with Lusanda, because of the book that's coming, he has to work on this relationship with his two parents, 
that you know it, it was beyond the circumstances that they were not in his life yeah. and there's that uh, work that is being done by all parties I think what his beef was they they came into his life and acted as if nothing you know ever happened and that didn't sit well with me I'm like no you can't be absent my entire life and then just come and, and want to be a parent all of a sudden so he they needed to address that and he needed to tell them how he felt yeah. and he did that and then I think from there then they can build um, going forward yeah I, I, I thought that was such a a, power shift, a powerful shift to bring in mm -hmm. because in our parents' eyes we mm -hmm. remain children yeah. at whatever yeah. age. It's frustrating. It's it is. I it's mean, it's mama can still send me to the Spaza shop, but I'm going to go to Korea. I mean, I was safe by the way. I miss her. But she, she took it me like I could not send my kids to the shop. She would send me while her grandkids hey, sat there, in the lab. They are sitting there, oh. there. Yeah, so we never grow. No, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and I thought for it was such an important shift to bring in because yeah. at some point, our parents have to see us as the adults, adults that yeah. that we are. Um. Now, my my final question now before mm -hmm. I open it to everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't look at my notes. <laughs> it's so much. I'm scared. Of, I'm not even seeing. I'm so scared. Oh my god. <laughs> um, you bring in. Oh, Dumi Sani comes back, ne? but he has. Um, he has a very cameo role, and when he does appear, he's like an enigma. You know, if you've read Lee Child's books. Or if you've watched um, Ding this is still Tom Cruise or Jack Oh yes, 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 And that's for me that is how Udum Sani always appeared mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. You know, he it's like he's jumping in mm -hmm. and then he's jumping out and mm -hmm. then he's coming back again. You know, sort of make dreamy vibes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. and you know, towards the end it, it looks like there's a story coming, eh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 20 with her. Oh, yes. Is this? Yeah, I'm on chapter 2. Nima, I'm saying. So, yeah, there, there's a story coming there. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I can't talk much about it, too, but mm. it's, it's the character that you will love to hate. Is that the word? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No yeah but you can, you, can talk, you can talk about him mm. in relation to, to Stramlet. To Stramlet. Yeah. Yeah. Because in relation to Stramlet, okay, at first... He also now, because there's a baby, this baby Luna, you know, does something. He doesn't like kids. He no. gets annoyed by kids. He He's that person. And his person of interest, which it doesn't appear in this book, will have a child. And now you see how he, he can't even pick up, you know, Luna. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were just looking at each other. So that's, that's going to come up. And also... You know his relation. I wanted to show how how grown their their relationship, uh, Ulusanda and and mm -hmm. yeah. because when it started it was volatile. They wanted yeah. to kill each other. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now there they are. He was walking uh, Umdoni down the aisle. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I wanted to show that side as well of their relationship. Not about his because his is gonna be messy. But I wanted to show the relationship between the two brothers that as much as they don't see eye to eye on, on many things, yeah. the love between them, even though they don't say it, they never say it probably, but it's there, you can, you can see it and you can feel it. Absolutely. Um. <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to leave it here for now mm -hmm. and open it up to... Welcome. Can I, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read them and I'm, I'm you know, I want to read it. Uh, it's on sale. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's interesting when you read your extract, it was I. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and so clearly the perspective, she's looking at Ula Sanda, she's looking at all the other people, and the perspective is hers. Yes. Yeah. So it's quite an interesting thing because... In fact, I can make my own perspective of him if I want. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. 
Um, that yes, I think that's why I have the the dual point of views because yes. she has her own perspective of him, yes. of which doesn't necessarily mean that's who he is. Exactly. So yeah. now, if we get to hear her own perspective, then we would wouldn't know exactly who Lusanda is. Exactly. But fortunately, I do uh, a point of view from Lusanda, oh, so he gets okay, to okay. give us his own okay. thoughts and his own oh, yes. Okay. So okay. I think that's why how it balances. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't yeah. be balanced. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant writers yeah. do balance it, but I am not there. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I am not there. Yes, I hear you say that your books are a series. Yes. Okay. Um, will a reader be able to, to, to read any of them independently? Except for these two, yes. They would, yeah, they, they would read Unspoken Truth on uh, its own, they would read Ravage Souls on its own. Mm -hmm. um, even Strama Pain can be read on its own, but then this one cannot be read without reading Strama Pain. Okay. I mean, the same. Yeah. All of, most of, all of them are standalones. Even something about you is, uh, but only this one gets to go. It makes it rich because, you know, you bring mm -hmm. some of the characters from the previous yes. books in, yes. in these yes. books as well. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, mm. My question is more into your writing way. Mm -hmm. So, do you write with a pen or do you type it? Do you listen to music? <laughs> no music? What's your preference? What, where, where, where do you go into so my writing, you go space. Into going, yeah, your writing space? Uh, I can write anywhere. I, I can be sitting in a room full of people and I'm on my phone and I will type. I, I can wait on my phone. I do not write. The pen I use when I do, I will do a, a family tree of the characters mm -hmm. and I will jot down notes you know, on where I want this character to be. So I do that with the pen. But the, the writing, no, I type. And most of the time I type on my phone. Um, and then when when I've typed maybe a few chapters, then I'll sit on my laptop because phone there's a lot of errors and phone what the phone does yeah. it gives um, a lot of alternative yes, words or whatever. So I will then go sit on the that's when I, when I'm sitting on the laptop going over what I wrote, then I listen to music or I can be quiet. But I don't I can be in a bus and write. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like where if, if inspiration comes, I get my phone out. My friends will be talking and having a good time, and I'll be creating you somewhere. <laughs> 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 or I'll be killing a baby. <laughs> 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 so I feel given for Stella. Can you call him? Yeah. 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 So what I, maybe it's my imagination, it was going wild, but like some of the extra characters, um, the way you would describe them, I said, mm, is so you're describing a dirty or is it That's dirty? where am I going to find inspiration? <laughs> where? You are all there. If you've been in my life, you are there. You just don't the know I it. The doctor and the, the, the therapist. Yes. So the like yes. way she's dressed. I have to add, I'll be like, yeah, yeah like the hair, and I know you had that, um, I think you had, no, they're just braids, I think the, the, the yeah. with black and white, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I was, that and the Bohemian, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> where are going to get characters from, why are you going to get characters from, why are <clears throat> we'll take one last question before we wrap up. <laughs> no question. I have a question. Okay. I have a question. Why were you blushing so much when you're speaking about Duma? Like she was blushing because did you see? Was it? I? <laughs> no, it's like she, she, she even said. Oh, okay. Yeah, you even did this. Yeah, <laughs> 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 
this. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have a feeling we're going to hate to do <laughs> Oh, I would love that. Yeah, yeah. see? Please, please. Oh, no, no, please. We don't want to hate him. And, um, yeah. And, and you don't tell an author you don't want to hate him. <laughs> to the parents because I think there is still a story with the parents, parents. Yes, the thing is, is if, if I do the story with the parents you know I mean, I, I like to have my intimate moments <laughs> so other parents how are they going to write how are they going to from me and then I would like you to further encourage everyone here mm -hmm. why they need to buy mm -hmm. Stramlet mm -hmm. and also man this chapter and your own do me is is the one is the the ending the <coughs> ending is the one for me um, my question now yeah also relates to are you ever going to write about mm -hmm. the parents is it more challenging writing older, mature parent figure like characters? I'm actually or someone like you? within. I did write because I remember with Lucolo's parents, they had a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucolo's mother and uh, Ryan's father, but yeah. I, I cut it out when I published the books. I don't think it's challenging. I, I'm a footy now. I'm older, so now. Of Disney, you're doing it for me. <laughs> 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 so no, I don't think it would be challenging. Maybe I'll just have to tone down on certain things, but no, it wouldn't be a challenge. But yay, writing about that man would exhaust me because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have to start it now when we know him. I'll have to go back okay. when when he first met his wife, which is to me, and his mother, yes. and Lusanda's mother, mm. and I don't want to open that can of worms. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, okay. That's another one for me. Mm. Pumza, I understand you connected. Mm. All your books are self-published, right? Yes. Um, have you found your home in self-publishing, or do, would you ever consider um, going mainstream in the future? Seeing that this is recorded, I don't want to say never. <laughs> 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 but I feel like I've, 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 I've approached that side and I've questioned it. It's, it's still not working for me the way that I would want it to work for me. Yeah. Yeah. So for now, this is my home. And um, I think the only challenge, I think, is, is, is marketing our work mm -hmm. as in this and distribution. Other than that, I don't, I don't see... Um, 
we we need to change the sex of indies and make it work for us i don't, I don't want to be knocking in doors with I, would, yeah. I feel like I'm not wanted at the times, or there's no space for me, or, or I have a space here. I just need to make it work for me, and, 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 and so far it's working. It can it can do better, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I would like us to round off this discussion with. Um, Page 200. I promise you Um Yeah, just from there to the end. And that would be, that's going to be our, 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 our parting shot. Because I just feel that um, this is such a perfect ending to this story. Mm -hmm. And it hints at a Edited at another book. Yeah. It does. Yeah. The gunshot wedding is over before I even finish reciting a sonnet in my head. Guests flock around the newlyweds to congratulate them, and this might be my chance to slip away and attend to my business. Mobo, wait. The one person I don't want to have a conversation with is the one chasing after me. I slowly turn to face him, squashing the head the edge to push my fist through his perfect teeth. His mm -hmm. clean cut hair and perfect suit with a perfect smile <laughs> makes me <laughs> <so> itch. <laughs> Gabada, is there anything I can help you with? He stands before me, hands in his suit, pants, and reeking of privilege. <laughs> I meet guys like him for breakfast, in business and on the streets, especially the streets. That's my turf. I've been trying to get hold of Zizo. What does that have to do with me? I tug at my tie. You are the last person she's been with. I am not her keeper, and you are not either. Ngobo, she is many things, but Zizo won't just abandon her child without a word. I grind my jaw. This fucking idiot is wasting my time. <laughs> you know her better than I do, I shrug. This interrogation is over, and if I were you, I would pay attention to the pretty fiancé you have. I wink, turn around, heading for the elevator. Should I ask Lusanda instead? He shouts as I step out of the lift. Do whatever the hell you want. The door slides close, slide closed. I pull out my phone and dial when someone picks up on the other end. They don't speak but listen as per my earlier instruction. Hmm. Call that idiot ex of yours and get him off uh, get him to back off before I blow blow his brains out. I hang up. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Let begins and a hint at a story yes. anchored by Dumisani Mobo begins. Um, guys, I'd like to thank you so much for, for coming out. We are banned, I know, but I know. Uh, you are here, you are warm. We had a lovely, lovely conversation, and we hope we leave here with a lot of books. I hope you brought your magic pen. You need to sign as well. I did. You did. Fantastic. Yes. And Throw a bit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for writing and sharing your work with the. Uh, thank you for, with the rest of thank us. You. Thank yeah. you for for always doing this with me. I I appreciate it, and I love that you made time. I know you have a thing immediately after this, so I am like I'm humbled. Yeah, Bridge books. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>